Hey, it's Michelle, your CXC Biology Tutor. In this past Paper Solutions video, I will be looking at the Human and Social Biology 2008 Paper 1, which is the multiple choice paper, and I'll be focusing on questions 1 to 20. Alright, let's begin. Question 1, which of the following features is not common to all living organisms? Is it A, using food to produce energy? B, releasing energy by a process of respiration? C, producing identical cells in reproduction? Or D, getting rid of metabolic waste products? So through a process of elimination, you should know that C would be the correct answer because not all living organisms would be producing identical cells in reproduction. That is asexual reproduction. So that is not common to all living organisms. All of the other features are common. Okay, question two. The slightly viscous substance consisting mainly of water and found immediately inside cell membranes is the, is it A, the cytoplasm, B, plasma membrane, C, the nuclear membrane, or D, the protoplasm? So the correct answer for that would be the cytoplasm and not the protoplasm. The protoplasm is actually the cytoplasm and the organelles that are found inside the cytoplasm together. So it could only be the cytoplasm. For sure it is not the plasma membrane, also known as the cell membrane, and it's definitely not the nuclear membrane. So the cytoplasm is that fluid region within the cell that would carry the various cell organelles. Okay, question three, which of the following characteristics of living organisms may be observed by an increase in size? Is it A, respiration, B, reproduction, C, nutrition, or D, growth? So this is an easy question. So the obvious answer for that would be growth. So growth is the permanent increase in size. Okay, question four. Uh, the group of cells which specialize to perform the same function is called, is it A, a tissue, B, an organelle, C, an organ, or D, an organism? So the correct answer for that would be a tissue. It cannot be an organelle. The organelle are the structures found within the cells. The organ would be a group of tissues coming together to perform a particular function and the organism would be the collection of the various organ systems that would make up the entire body, so the organism on a whole. So it has to be A, a tissue, okay items 5 to 7 refer to the following drawing of a plant cell. Match each organelle below with one of the options above, each of which may be used more than once, once or not at all. All right, so for number five, we have the chloroplast. So the chloroplast would be C. The cytoplasm would be D. And the mitochondria would have to be B. So that elongated organelle with the squiggly structure there, that is the mitochondria. So remember the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis, the cytoplasm is the fluid region of the cell, and the mitochondria is the site of respiration. Okay, so moving on to item 8. Item 8 refers to the following diagram which shows a specialized cell of the human body. So which cell is shown in the diagram? Is it A, a nerve cell, B, a muscle cell, C, epithelial cell, or D, sperm cell? So this is an easy one too. So you can clearly see that that is a sperm cell. Okay, question nine. Which of the following is the correct sequence in the building process of the body? So we're looking at cellular organization. So the correct answer would have to be begin with cells. So there are only two options for that because remember cells are the basic unit of life. So we have cells coming together to form tissues, tissues coming together to form the organs, and then organs coming together to form the organ systems. So that is C, the correct answer. 
Item 10 refers to the following diagram which shows an experiment to investigate osmosis. So which statement best describes what will be observed after a few hours? Is it A, the level of water in the beaker will increase? B, the sugar particles will dissolve? C, the potato will shrink? Or D, the sugar molecules will diffuse through the potato? So we're looking at an investigation on osmosis. So remember that osmosis is the movement of water from where there are more water molecules to where there are fewer water molecules. So in this setup here, you should expect the water inside of the beaker to pass across the potato, which is acting as the semi-permeable membrane. And that water is going to pass across the potato and enter the sugar. So therefore, you should expect the answer to be B. The sugar particles will dissolve. So once that water gets in and mixes up with the sugar, the sugar will eventually dissolve. Okay, question 11. Substances are transported through the walls of cells utilizing energy from ATP. This process is called, is it A, diffusion, B, osmosis, C, active transport, or D, absorption? So the correct answer for this would be active transport. From the time you hear energy is involved, think active transport. Diffusion and osmosis are passive forms of transport. They do not require energy at all. They're, they move nat they move substances naturally on their own without any use of energy. So diffusion and osmosis definitely not and is definitely not absorption. So it's active transport. Okay, let's look at question 12. Which joint is found at the knee in human beings? Is it the A, the ball and socket joint? B, the pivot joint? C, the gliding joint, or D, the hinge joint. So you know that your knee can only move in one direction. So that would have to be the hinge joint, which acts similarly to a door. So it's only moving in one plane only. So that's the hinge joint. Question 13, an example of a voluntary action is, is it A, the knee jerk? B, the blinking of an eye, C, dropping a hot knife, or D, turning on a light switch. So remember, voluntary action requires conscious control. So it's something that you choose to do. So it would have to be D, turning on a light switch. All the other options are reflex actions, or quick actions, or involuntary actions, which does not require any thought. Okay, question 14. The human circulatory system transports. Is it A, oxygen, starch, and nitrogenous waste? B, nutrients, nitrogenous waste, and oxygen? C, oxygen, hormones, and glycogen? Or D, nutrients, heat, and fiber? So you really have to think carefully for this one. So we know for sure that oxygen will be transported and nutrients. But there are certain molecules within some of these options here that definitely would not be transported by the circulatory system. So the answer for this would be B. So we have the nutrients being transported along with the nitrogenous waste and the oxygen. So remember the circulatory system is responsible for transporting both good substances that are useful and waste substances. So the waste substances would be the nitrogenous waste. So it cannot be option A. The starch messed that one up. Starch is a large molecule and that is not transported in the blood. Similarly with option C, although oxygen and hormones will be correct, the glycogen once again that is a large molecule that is not transported in the blood. And then for option D, fiber is not transported in the blood. Okay, question 15. Which group of muscles is responsible for the flexion of the upper arm? So by flexion, you mean when you know you're flexing your arm, showing your muscles. So this one will have to be A, the biceps. So the biceps is the muscle that is going to get bulgy when you flex your arm. If they were talking about the extension of the arm, it would have to be the triceps that will be contracting. 
So remember the biceps and the triceps, they work together to flex and to extend the arm. So they work opposite to each other. That's known as antagonistic action. Okay, let's move on to question 16. Which of the following statements best describes the function of the iris? Is it A, alters the shape of the lens, B, controls the amount of light entering the eye, C, prevents internal reflection of the light, or D, refracts the greatest amount of light? So the correct answer for that would have to be controlling the light entering the eye. So remember the iris is muscular tissue and it surrounds the pupil, so it's going to control that pupil that open in and allow light to enter, depending on the light intensity, if it's dim light or if it's very bright light. Okay, question 17. To view a near object, the shape of the lens is changed when the A, ciliary muscles contract, B, ciliary muscles relax, C, circular muscles contract, or D, circular muscles relax. Now we're talking about the shape of the lens and you should, by process of elimination, you can rule out the last two because there are no circular muscles that would alter the shape of the lens. So that's out of the question. You find circular, circular muscles in the iris. So you're looking between A and B. So when the eye is focusing on a near object, the lens is actually going to get fatter. So the circular muscles are going to contract so that allows the lens to get fatter and focus on that near object all right moving on to question 18 which sequence shows the path taken by air moving into the lungs so the correct answer for that would have to be b so the air passes through the trachea or the windpipe, down through the bronchi, so the left and the right bronchi, then to the bronchioles, and then finally to the alveoli, which are the air sacs. Question 19. In the blood clotting mechanism, fibrinogen will change to fibrin in the presence of, is it A, prothrombin, B, thrombin, and calcium ions, C, thrombokinase, or D, thrombin. So the correct answer for this one will have to be both thrombin and the calcium ions. So the thrombin and the calcium ions are both needed to help convert that soluble fibrinogen into the insoluble fibrin, which will form the network that will trap the cells in the blood and stop the blood from flowing out. So that's how the blood clotting would be carried out. And number 20, the energy released in respiration is in the form of, is it A, ADP, B, RNA, C, ATP, or D, FSH. So that will have to be the ATP. So remember, ATP is the storage molecule for energy, adenosine triphosphate. The ADP now, that is adenosine diphosphate. So when ATP is broken down, that would produce the ADP and the inorganic phosphate. So the ATP stores the energy and releases it in respiration. All right, so that is the end of this video, questions one to 20.